Come on over, it's time for Tim Friend. Hey, welcome back to Tim Friend. I'm back doing some Immortal Sword because I gotta get some stuff done. And I'm not sure if Julia Friend's schedule will allow for me to record some Fire Emblem 6 with her. So there might be a lot of Fire Emblem coming up because that's definitely something that we want to do. But for now, Fire Emblem 7X, Immortal's Ward. Uh, so this is where we left off. Um, this map is... it's... It's interesting. It's got two paths, so you can go east and then north, or north and then east. And each has got its own sort of little themes. Uh, to the right we've got a lot of Myrmidons, and the Pegasus Knights will come down from here and straight across to the middle. And over here we've got a couple more Spellcasters and Horse Boys. And uh, like a couple of Pirates, I think they make their way across the river here. So we're immediately beset from all sides, which is a, uh, a pretty pretty strong theme for Immortal Swords maps, especially the ones without Fog of War, is that there's, you immediately got dudes you gotta fight. There's none of the Fire Emblem 6 like, well, just move for two turns and then there's the dudes. It's immediately dudes are in range, you gotta figure out how to beat them or they're gonna figure out how to beat you. I, I mean, they're not like insane dudes, like this Myrmidon's just got like a bronze sword. He, look at those stats. What a, this guy is literally has the same stat uh, rating as one of our new uh, recruit units, Sybil. Sybil is a sky watcher, which is the apprentice, the trainee, that's the term, trainee form of a Pegasus Knight. Delightful. And Tony is a scout, which is the, I already forgot the word, trainee version of an archer. Archers are dope. Uh, I'm gonna choose, I think one of these to use. I mean, fuck it, maybe both. Can I get away with using both of these and then one of the next two, because we're gonna get two more trainees, uh, for Uther at least. Let me think about that. I don't know. So let's start with uh, with the the South crew. Because I'm just gonna split up my party in two, even though in Dungeons and Dragons that's not advisable. In this it is advisable, so you can beat the game and get a good rank, or beat the level and get a good rank. Uh, when I mouse over Marcus, it shows his movement and attack range, which already. Uh, a good thing to show, uh, but it also shows uh, Isadora Square as a little, little bit of a yellow highlight. Uh, that means, whoop, gotta get used to the controls. That means they can talk to each other. That's a nice little thing jam. Nice little, little thing jam. That also shows that Eagler can talk to Sybil. How weird. I don't think we're gonna have them talk to each other yet because we we gotta solve these probalos right off the bat. Uh, Uther does a hefty chunk to both of these boys, but does not kill. How does Isadora do? Because we are still trying to get her to be a good, a good, good girl. Uh, she almost kills that pirate, which is a bummer because the pirate is so weak. <laughs> it's, it's because her strength is just mid lay miserable. It's tray unfortunate. Uh, how does Marcus do against him? Oh, jeez, I gotta get used to these controls. Um, let's see. That's pretty good odds. Uh, I mean, fuck it, right? One, two, the... So, another cool thing. You see how the soldier in the bottom right has a red flashing exclamation point? That means he's got something that's super dope against Marcus, because he's my currently selected unit. I can eyeball it and see that he's out of range, but that's something to keep an eye on, especially because there's a lot of horse slayers and Zanbatos uh, extant in this game. Alright, give it a good try. Good job, Marky Mark. I mean that that was expected. It's, it's pretty good, pretty good odds of getting hit by that axe. That axe, though. Hey, 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 hey. Funny joke, right? All right. Send in Isadora. Uh, she won't get killed by that Myrmidon, and she will, in fact, yeah, we're using Iron Sword. Will, in fact, I mean, should we just use Slim Sword? Will the, will the real Slim Sword please kill this boy? I don't remember what supports I'm getting, so that's fun. <laughs> I just don't remember at all. Fuck, man. Oh, well. And we... I'm... Maybe... Maybe I switched to using Harkin, even though everyone else is at a higher level, just because uh, Harkin will get us a pretty easy Knight's Crest uh, in a couple chapters. But, I mean, I figure we'll just take the fucking... Take the handicap and bring shit-ass Marcus in, and we'll have him do something dumb. I just dick around in a house or something like that, and we'll have a very challenging uh, whatever chapter that is. I don't remember the number. 
Uh, let's see. So for the North team, uh, we've got Civil, we got Tony, we got Hassar, well, yeah, we got Eagle Air. Uh, now Madeline and Hassar are supposed to get together. Where's Madeline? She's in there somewhere. Because Madeline, you'll see, looks kind of like Lynn, and Hassar is Sasean. You can see where this goes if you watch the Fire Emblem 7 playthrough, or I just have played Fire Emblem 7. Uh, Hassar is a, he's a weirdo, because his growths, as I remember, aren't fucking great. His base stats are pretty good, they're not tanky, he's just, just kind of a good bowsman. Uh, he's got a dope-ass, uh, brave bow to start with, so he's kind of a fixer. He's, he's really good at coming in and just fixing whatever problems you've got early on. What I like to do for the be the beginning of this map is to turtle for the north side. Just let these Myrmidons and soldiers come to you because you're probably going up there with a couple of uh, green ass trainees. So there's not a huge uh, huge amount to be gained in throwing yourself to the wolves. Uh, let's see, we can have Tony come in here. One, two, three, four, five. They'll be fine. Maybe we'll. I mean, should we get their supports together? It doesn't super matter. Immediately, Eagler can support with Madeline. Is that a good thing to do? Uh. Let's, let's sit on it a little bit. And then Madeline can come down here. And just start getting ready, really. Which, does she have all the shit still? No, we traded it away. I'm just so intelligent. One thing I was expecting when I first played through this mission was uh, reinforcements to come from our starting location. Uh, that's not a thing in this map, so don't worry. Oh, good job getting... Hey! A single point of strength? I'll fucking take it. What you got for me, bud? Oh, he's, he's gonna... Wow, I'm shocked he missed. Thankfully, the trainee Pegasus Knight does not share the bow weakness of her evolved form. Alright. Everyone's kind of creeping in. Moving and creeping. We do a stab. We do just the one stab. Uh, we come around here. We do just the one stab. We go here, we do one stab and kill. How do with this? Do just the one stab. I don't want to take him in there because of the stabs from the soldier. If I take in here, that's a good stab. How's this? Uh, this is the better stab. Do a stab, Uther. Thank you for doing a stab. Thank you for doing a stab. Like, uh, like Wreck-It Ralph. And then Isadora can come in, do a stab. Good. Yes. A good stab. Get experience. Okay. Now Marcus come over here. One, two, three, four, five. Not get stabbed. But in fact, do a stab. Use bronze lance. Because stab is finished. Yes. Kill. Good, Marcus. Yes. Thank you. Everyone doing great. Good job with supports, everybody. Alright, use Madeline. I'm not sure what accent this is. This is just me. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, this is just me opening my mouth and my brain falling out. So, I it's not... It, I just like saying words in funny ways. I'm not trying to do like some kind of crazy accent or some shit. I, I do have... I was gonna call it a love of language, but it makes me sound like a fucking... Someone trying to be a community college uh, English professor. So I'm not going to say that. I, I do like when stuff is purposefully wrong in English. Cause that's, I mean, that's the only language I know. So that's, that's the only language I can really talk about. But uh, I like it when when there's, uh, uh, like the internet phrases, English. Uh, that fucking cracks me up all the time. Hmm. Cannot quite kill. And then can do... Well, that will kill. That, that's 100% gonna kill, kill. Uh, I should have given a short bow to Hussar so he wasn't an always killing boy. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it sure could be better. Who do we care about more? Who do we care about more? Uh, Tony's gonna be good just because of the weapon triangle. Her stat growths are also pretty dope. Uh, maybe I want to get Tony with Eagler? That's always fun. Sybil, Pegasus Knight, real always useful, always fucking useful, and she's a bit lower level. We want to get 
We want to get Sybil to be a Pegasus Knight before we want Tony to be an Archer, because Tony being an Archer doesn't necessarily change anything about the way she plays, it just makes her have higher movement speed, because the, uh, the force-based movement speed is fucking brutal. <laughs> Especially for a backline person, but having a Sybil go from a force-based trainee movement to a uh, seven-space Pegasus Knight movement, that's a spicy meat ball. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you for for feeding me these weekly, weekly mercenaries. These week-along mercenaries. Uh, it does 17 damage. Uh, what's what's Eagler Speedler? Not enough to double. Uh, not enough to kill. Great. So I'm going to have Eagler go in and use a sword on the Nomad to do a little a little potato chip of damage. Pa pa. Boop. Just the one, please. Thank you. Uh, how's this? This guy's going fine. Uh, move him up here. Move Harkin nowhere. This, cause, can the Nomad hit Harkin? No. No one can hit Harkin. Harkin can go to sleep. Because he is forced to deploy until, like, the next chapter, I think. The next chapter we will use Uther. I can't remember. There is definitely a lord change in this game, but I do not remember when the fuck it happens. Uh, this playthrough inspired one of my good friends, uh, oh. I guess the soldiers moved farther than I evolved. Might be. Whew. That was almost a very bad note to end an episode on. <laughs> Whew. Mamma mia, mamma mia. Still fine. Still fine. Great. Good and great. Oh gosh, is that a Pegasus? Oh, it's so enchanting. And deadly. Fuck, what was- Nay, it isn't the beast you need worry about, it's the warrior that rides it. Ilians strike without fear or mercy. They are trained to think of bringing pride to their nation before all else. True enough, but they can only strike as deep as they do because of their steeds. Their flight allows them to ignore mountains, rivers, forests, or any kind of choke point. They're a tactical nightmare. That makes sense. Sir Eagler, didn't you once say that you had taken an alien mercenary as a lover? Well, Lady Madeline. Ha! <laughs> Somehow I imagine it was more likely the other way around. That was a bit of a chunky line, but alright. A dot dot dot. Just talking about how Pegasus Knights can fly over shit, and they will not hesitate to do so. Alright. Next time on Tim Friend, I promise I won't let Marcus die. I super promptly promise. Bye, everybody.